Chief Executive Ahmed Fahur. Good morning. Good morning, Neil. Is this the end of it or could there be more jobs in the future? Look, uh, we're focused right now on um, how we become even more efficient and a leaner organisation. The reality is, is that letter volume is down a billion items and uh, that's 30%. And so therefore we need to reduce our head office costs. So you say you're focused on being a leaner organisation. Does that mean this is just the beginning? There could be more? I, I think organisations always need to be lean and they need to take the uh, savings that they make and invest them in frontline customer service and that's what we're doing. We're opening up stores on Saturday and we're delivering packages on Saturday. So I, I take that as meaning that it'll be an ongoing process, will it? It's always ongoing to be more efficient and lean in any organisation. How will these jobs go then? Will they be cut or will it be attrition? How will you get rid of them? Um, these non-customer facing roles um, are just that. They're positions in the, in the headquarters building where we'll go through and identify what areas are no longer needed because the business has shrunk by 30 percent and so we'll go through a process and we'll identify what roles are not needed the people then get an opportunity to say can be they be redeployed somewhere else and if not then they leave and they get a package okay um 900 jobs initially the what is the future for australia post overall i mean you're quoted today talking about saying if you don't fix it you, you sort of become a kodak or the, the local video store what do you mean by that well look look what all over the world what technology is doing you know uh, the whole paper-based industry have, have a look at newspapers for example or have a look at video stores and kodak was a great example of a great brand and a great company who stuck to its core business and when its core business changed with the advent of an iphone and digital uh, technology, they went out of business, no matter how big and how mighty. And the reality is, is that Australia Post is a fantastic company. It's been in business 200 years. And if we don't change with the way society is changing, with the way customers are changing, we'll become part of history. And we don't want to be that. Are you sure, and we talked about that before, but are you sure that with these job cuts, it will not affect service to the public? How can you be sure? I've given an absolute categoric assurance that this is non-customer facing roles that we're reducing in headquarters and so forth. As a matter of fact, I've also made a commitment that every dollar that we save in the corporation is going to be invested in frontline services. We announced here on your show that we're now going to be opening all our stores um, uh, on Saturdays. We're going to be opening also and delivering packages on Saturday. So this is an example of us saying, let's put our money and our investment into things that customers and society value. So the mail delivery is actually continuing to plummet, is it? Mail delivery not only has been declining, it's accelerating. Its rate of decline is getting faster. Is it, is it possible that we're looking at three day a week deliveries? Well, I think it's not only possible, as a matter of fact, it's happening right now. So let me go back and explain one thing here. Our customers, being business and corporations who send the mail, because remember 95% of mail is sent by businesses and corporations to citizens. Those customers of ours, on the 1st of June, we offered them the choice of picking which service they want. Do they want three day? Do they want five day? And now, starting at Christmas, they can have six day with Express Post. So what we're saying to business and governments uh, who are the 95% users, you choose which service you want and what price you want. And that's what they're looking for, choice and convenience. Will that ever reach the consumer, me, the customer at home with my letterbox? I'm well, only going to have three, three a week. Well, you don't actually know how fast and how frequent your mail is. You're a receiver. You get I it when... it arrives every day, though. And, and mail does come um, every day. It's just that a business or a corporation has chosen where it goes. The real question is, is for the 5% of um, citizens out there who buy a stamp um, and want to send it, do they want to pay one price for five days or would they like the choice of three day, five day or six day? Well, that's the person who's mailing it. What about me? Will I always get mail five days a week if it's sent to me? We would love for you to continue to choose mail every day of the week, but you're actually voting by saying you're choosing to elect to receive a lot of your items digitally. Because we used to have 100% market share. Today, we have 1% market share. So the five-day-a-week delivery is gone? Five-day-a-week delivery is one of the choices we have at the moment. That doesn't sound like it's secure for the future. Now, the, the Australia Post was set up under a charter, wasn't it? Um, yes, it was. Can I just add just one part to what um, you just said? Yeah. Five-day-a-week delivery 
is something that I don't think is going to disappear because what's being what's going to disappear maybe is less and less letters. But what we're finding is more and more parcels. As I keep saying, it's not the delivery that's going to disappear. It's what the content of what is being delivered is changing. So I mightn't be able to get mail uh, letters five days a week. You'll get it seven days a week, 24 hours a day. It's called digital mail. Yeah, but old-fashioned letters, will I be able to get those five days a week? If businesses and corporations choose not to do it into the future, that's uh, uh, something that they will decide what they want. Did you have to change the charter for Australia Post, or will you have to change the charter? Um, our regulation currently stipulates that for uh, consumers at the moment that there is a five-day service of mail. If that service is not being used, we do require um, reform of our charter to enable us to um, to meet the customer changes. Did the government have to approve the... the I don't understand how, how close you work with government. Did the government have to approve the job cuts? Um, no. No, they That's, don't. We have a board and we have a corporation uh, structure uh, as a commercial entity, and they're the ones who decide... Um, how we'll do things on a day-to-day -day basis. The, uh, your salary has become a point of contention. There's quite a lot of uh, quite a campaign running online on the internet comparing your salary to the French and US postal services. What is your salary? It's a public figure, um, I know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's in the papers and in the annual reports and so forth. I, I, I think, look... Uh, 4.8 million, is that right? Yeah, I, I think people um, um, can, you know, say what they want to say. That's really um, not a matter for me to decide what it is. Um, we have, um, we're, we're focused right now on something very, very important, which is how do we make sure Australia Post survives, especially in a parcels world? Because I think comparing Australia Post to other letter companies is actually quite wrong. We're actually a bigger parcel company than we are a mail company. So, but you, you know, the union, it's, it's possibly union driven, I don't know, but the, presumably there's some union angst about the level of salary. You're not concerned by that? I think the unions uh, should focus right now, like I'm focused on, which is our employees and making sure that we can survive the digital revolution. That's really where the issue is. Well, they're saying that, that the 4.8 million is not comparable to other countries. Is that fair or not? Neil, I, as I said, I think the real issue here is how do we survive this digital revolution? And uh, you know what? Let me just say this. Whether it's me sitting in this chair or anybody else sitting in this chair, it will not change what technology is doing to many industries. The reality is, is that if you want to bring about people, management and leadership who really understand where the world is going, not where the world was, it's a worldwide uh, basis of competing for talent and I believe we have a terrific team and we're focused on the challenges facing us. When does your plan go to government, your blueprint go to government? Um, we, we, we have submitted a draft right now and uh, our final proposal is due in July. Um, but we're working very well with the government and we're getting a very good reception. Thank you very much for your time. Neil, always a pleasure.